Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Talking Female Health with Amy and Lisa. Amy Corner, my beautiful co-host, and me, Lisa Yara. And today, after we've gone through a whole on a whole journey of detoxification and the role the lymphatic system plays in detoxification, we are today going to address another important player in your detox uh, health uh, and in your vitality which is the liver which is maybe the most important organ in your body that has a lot of jobs to do and uh, I would like, like to hand over to Amy who has an amazing metaphor for the liver and her functions and I'm a fan of metaphors because they make things so easy to grasp and visual in your head. So, um, Amy, please share with us your metaphor of the liver. Thank you. Yeah, so the liver to me, she is the busy mom of the body. She is that mom that does everything for everyone. She's taking care of the household. She's taking care of the children. She's on the school PTA committee. Like, she is doing everything. She's caring for her parents, her in-laws. Like, she is literally holding so many plates that she's trying to juggle because the liver has over 500 jobs that she does for you in your body. And the thing about the liver is no matter what you throw at it, she is going to keep performing. She's not going to stop. She's got like pretty bad boundaries because she's not going to say no. <laughs> she is just going to keep doing more and more and more and more and more. And this is exactly how I see the liver. She is just giving to us all the time. It doesn't matter how bad our diet is, how bad our environment is, like all of the things. She's just going to keep going. And what every busy mom needs is recognition hmm. she needs recognition she needs thanking appreciation love acknowledgement hmm. and I find this piece so interesting because one of the things that I do with my clients is I take them on a tour of their anatomy using a, an anatomy app that I've got and we look where all the different organs are in the body and just have a tour of everything and see how everything interacts. And I'm blown away every time by their reaction to their liver, like where it is, how big it is, how much space she's taking up. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've got a client who's in her 80s and she was just blown away that she'd lived 80 plus years not realizing where her liver was and mm -hmm. how significant it was. And we we had a really nice laugh together because she uses a lot of essential oils. And she's like, well, mm -hmm. I've been putting these essential oils on my liver, but clearly I haven't because that's not where <laughs> I've been putting so we just we just thought it was really funny that she was like saying oh you know I, I put these on my liver every day just like clearly I'm not putting on my liver because it's not in the most things <laughs> and bless her she was she was really um like good humored about it but yeah and I just I love that having that association of you know we we've all seen the mums who mm -hmm. are doing far too much and mm -hmm. carrying too much and you just want to get hold of them and say just mm -hmm. stop just calm down mm -hmm. you know I'm British so have a cup of tea and just mm -hmm. relax mm -hmm. and that is what our livers need so that mm -hmm. is very much how I view it. our lovely amazing livers they are like super mums yeah. and thank you for saying that last bit because I was just about to say and this image of a super mom is unfortunately also something that society portrays yes. as the ideal. So we push yeah. ourselves to the limits. <laughs> uh, 
while what we all need or what moms definitely need is recognition and appreciation and very often that would even do the trick of them being satisfied with like many moms they are okay with making a lot of sacrifices for their children yeah if the recognition is coming the appreciation at least absolutely yeah yeah and so yeah i love that you you pointed that out that the liver too even as a super mom yeah. just she needs a pause and i'm just thinking of like you should have um certain amounts of periods of time between meals where you don't eat snacks where you don't push your blood sugar just so that the liver has the chance because she cleans up like yeah. your whole system and she needs breaks yeah where she can pause because as every if you take a muscle for example why can our heart be with us for our whole life which can be more than 100 years in some cases mm. it's because between every pump it takes a break it makes a pause to recuperate and so our mm. livers too and every mom for sure out there <laughs> needs a break regularly yeah. please absolutely and you know I'm talking as a dog mom as well like I don't mm. I don't have children but just that recognition that women in general tend to take on a lot of the like social and mental load of mm. the household and that that needs recognizing and yeah. we need to really give some love and attention to our wonderful livers so yeah. I think it and support it needs yeah. support that's Absolutely. why we also want to support the liver yeah and I think a really good way of doing that starting opening up that conversation with your liver is to literally take the palm of your hand and hover like just under your um right rib is where your liver lives it's kind of it's it's huge so it's kind of behind the lip the rib and just just under it as well and just make that connection with her and let her know that you found her and you've acknowledged her you know even if you're not sure where to start if you're over completely overwhelmed just having mm -hmm. that connection and that awareness of where your liver is and just you know just closing your eyes and just giving gratitude for what she's doing is so big because mm -hmm. she's gonna she's gonna feel that yeah and actually taking some deep diaphragmatic mm -hmm. breaths using your diaphragm to breathe if you haven't listened to our last episode we've explained why diaphragmatic breathing is so important for the body and also for the liver because the diaphragm will extend downwards into the belly into the liver and give your liver a good massage mm -hmm. and who doesn't yeah. like a good massage <laughs> oh yeah lovely so nice so thanks so for nice. inviting us to take a breath with the liver. You're welcome. And this is one of the reasons why I really like working with essential oils, because not only do they have their medicinal benefits and they smell amazing and they just make you feel fantastic. But again, like I talked about in the lymphatic episode, it's an invitation to connect mm -hmm. with specific parts of your body. So just laughing thinking about my client bless her now you know where your liver is if there's an essential oil that you feel can support your liver and you know just having that practice of you know for me I get out of the shower I get dried I put the oil on my hand and then I rub it and hold it onto my liver and just have those few moments with her every morning just giving her love and gratitude and it takes moments and it makes such a big difference to how you feel about your body your awareness and you know does that does I always talk about how a resented body can't thrive and grow and heal mm -hmm. but also an ignored body like if, if mm -hmm. we're just not aware of where our livers are or where certain parts of our bodies are like we've just not got that awareness we're not helping to create 
a relationship and an environment with ourselves where healing and thriving and growing is the norm. Mm. And it's interesting that you pointed out the resentment because the liver in Chinese medicine is associated with anger and frustration yeah. and resentment. So if you carry a lot of these emotions, it's good for your liver health to release them in a safe way, safe for you and for mm -hmm. others. Um, but also when you carry a lot of those emotions, it can be helpful to look at your liver and address your liver because it might be that your liver can't help you process these emotions right now because yeah. she's busy. Yeah. She's a busy mom. Definitely. Mm -hmm. What are other ways to support our amazing liver? One thing that I always like to mention is bitter foods because your liver loves bitterness. The bitter Uh, how do you say that in English? Like the bitters in your food, like in, in of, co of course, um, a lot of green, leafy greens, mm -hmm. spinach, yeah. kale, these kinds of things. Yeah, um, leafy greens. Yeah, also yeah. like dandelion yeah. that you can both eat in a salad or as I like to do, drink as dandelion root tea. It's quite bitter. My liver loves it. Yeah. Yeah, and I try to have, when I know my liver needs that extra bit of love and support, I try to end my day with the dandelion tea because mm. um, she does a lot of the work on the night. So mm -hmm. just for me, it's just that connection in of I'm acknowledging that you need that little bit of extra love and support. So I'm giving you this dandelion tea to serve you through the night whilst you work and I sleep yeah amazing <clears throat> then also things like vitamin c mm. if we just stay with the food choices and yeah. the diet yeah and again like like we talked about in the previous episode when we're talking about lymphatic care movement and diaphragmatic breathing like you just said like creating that massage that movement that space for her so She's not, feel, you know, because there's nothing worse than feeling neglected, overworked mm. and being hunched in a corner, like mm. completely neglected. You want to have that space and that room for her to move and do what she needs to do. Yeah. yeah. And then also things like cutting your sugar. Mm -hmm. I hate breaking it to you, but <laughs> sugar spikes do not do your liver good. Yeah definitely like having an awareness of what's what's going into your body and I would say you know looking to reduce sugar caffeine and alcohol would be a really good place to start to really give your liver a bit of extra love if you if you um feel that that's needed Again, like like as I said before, she does a lot of work on the night. So if the last thing you're giving her is a glass of wine, <laughs> I'm not I'm not mm. judging anybody for this, but like it's having this awareness that mm. um, you know, what you what you're putting into your body, your body's got to deal with. So mm. thinking of alternatives to um care for yourself. Mm. And maybe just to soften the blow, <laughs> uh, maybe just cutting those out, out for a while and giving your liver that breathing space mm -hmm. and afterwards be mindful, as Amy said, of it's not about never having a glass of wine again or yeah. not drinking no, no. your no. coffee at all or never having cake yeah, or whatever. But it's about being mindful of your choices And giving yeah. your liver these breaks in between, basically. And how, how your body responds to them as well. Because I, yeah. you know, again, it took me a really long time to get this awareness with my body and I'm still working on it. And I know that there's certain foods and drinks that if I have them after a certain point in time in the day, I wake up feeling so much worse 
than if I haven't had those things. And, you know, there's always going to be times where you can't necessarily control what you, these situations, if you've got celebrations that, you know, those kind of things going on, mm. like you're at a wedding, you're not going to be going to bed at your usual time and you're going to be eating later and drinking later, all these kind of things. But it's just having an awareness of it. So then the next night, you can think, okay, so I know when I go to bed earlier and I have my dandelion tea or whatever it is that works for you, my body sleeps better, I feel better, and I wake up better. And my body deserves that because we had a really good night the night before (laughs) partying, which is fine, but just having that awareness of what your body's asking you for and what she needs to just yeah, I love that like not beating yourself up because yeah. oh my god I had a night out and now I yeah. did bad things to my liver no yeah. you had a great evening out you had fun uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully yeah. you had fun yeah and, and now if you, you're balancing that yeah and I was just gonna say if you were having a really good time and doing lots of laughing and dancing then that's your lymphatic system covered <laughs> like you know yeah and <laughs> an improved mood is also doing its thing exactly so yeah, so you can't, you know, you've got to live in the real world and not yeah. beat yourself up about decisions that you're making because there's always other decisions that you can make at a later point to... And remember, the anger and frustration will <laughs> also not help your liver. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I, I love- just wanted to say that, like, as you say, liver is a super mum. And also super moms have their limits too. Oh, and the liver does too. Yes. Um, and that's why we need to take extra good care yeah. of her. Because yeah. there can be things like it, when the liver isn't functioning well. And as we've shared also in the last episode about the lymphatic system, but I want to hone that in again, the liver plays a main role in detoxification Mm -hmm. of your body. So in keeping your body healthy, because detoxifying, removing the waste products and the toxins and the germs and bacteria and whatnot means that you uh, maintain a healthy cell environment. And that's important to have a healthy cell environment. And But if, yeah? No, I was just going to say, and I think you're probably on the same line, that a lot of the time the liver is massively like the lymphatic system, neglected and overlooked when it comes to certain health conditions. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I've talked in previous episodes, I had endometriosis for two decades and no one, absolutely no one, I saw like so many different medical Mm -hmm. professionals around my health. No one spoke to me about the role of my liver she mm-hmm. has over 500 jobs. Yeah, no one spoke mm-hmm. to me about her or how to look after her, how to support her. And such a huge vital role when it comes to healing and supporting the body in detoxing and regenerating. So mm-hmm. uh, sorry I interrupted you, Lisa, but like... no. Don't be sorry at all. That just that just came into my head. Like, yeah. Because I, I, I often forget to say the most important things because I feel like I've said them so many times. But yeah, like that realization that I'd been through this horrendous health journey. I'd lost my reproductive organs along the way. And no one had the conversation with me about potentially caring. But my liver and my my body's lymphatic and detoxification system, it just wasn't a conversation that anyone had with me. And I have lots of people come to me with conversations um, around, you know, their children have got eczema or, you know, mm-hmm. like their, their bodies are detoxing in some way. They've got some kind of issue going on and no one's talking to them about the liver. Mm. 
And that's what I what uh, was what I where I was going with this is that if your liver can't keep up the function, your body needs to find other ways to detoxify mm -hmm. because the toxins need yeah. to go somewhere. They cannot stay in the bloodstream, and so other ways are the skin, yeah, yeah, eczema, uh, but also other conditions of the skin, uh, psoriasis, for example, excess uh, sweating, bio, you know, mm -hmm. like body odor is a really common one, and. People are trying to use natural products and they're just saying, oh, they don't work because they still smell. And it's it's that realization that that's your body detoxifying. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you are not having to detox in that way, you're not going to have smelly body odor. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't really need to have a deodorant to, to cover up a smell. But again, you know, society tells us that we need to mask our armpits with fragrance because heaven forbid we should we should smell of, of our body natural sense so yeah that's another big area as well yeah and then the lungs mm -hmm. like any sort of lung issue yeah. Uh, yeah. those are of course the main pathways and if none of these work because there is some kind of stagnation happening your body will simply store it in fat cells because that's the easiest way to get rid of it then at least it's in the tissue and not in the bloodstream yeah the body's very clever although she it is although it doesn't it is. always you know it's not always what we want we don't want fat cells but you know if she's doing what she needs yeah. to do to keep you safe and healthy and well yeah 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 <clears throat> and so if you experience these kinds of things your liver is what to look out for and what to start getting reacquainted with <laughs> and caring for and what you described with the endometriosis i think it's all of the conditions that are estrogen dominant <clears throat> uh also simply like i have painful bleeds mm -hmm. Well, I do, did not or I do not have endometriosis. I do not have any condition that has, has been confirmed. Yet I know that since I'm taking care of my liver, especially and my lymphatic system also, my cramps have reduced so much that I'm able to stay upright when I'm on my period again. And that's why I take such good care the week or two weeks leading up to my menstruation especially of my liver yeah. because I know it will help the uh, the hormonal balance. It will help reduce the excess estrogen that's in my body that is not just produced by my own body, but we today we live in a really toxic environment. There are toxins in the air. There are toxins in our cleaning products, in our clothes, in our uh, especially like um, hygiene products. Yeah, There is toxins everywhere. And our body recognizes toxins for estrogen. That's why the body thinks there is too much too much estrogen. And what helps to reduce the estrogen? The liver, the supermom. Yeah. And so this, in, especially in today's world, like everyone needs to have a good relationship with their liver. <laughs> Give their yeah. liver a break. Care yeah. well for their liver. Absolutely. Yeah. And as you say, no one talks about it. Or very few people. Yeah. She doesn't get the recognition she deserves. Not <clears throat> really. And I'm not sure if it's because we, we very often tend to compartmentalize. Like when we get specialized in any kind of medical yeah. field, we tend to go down this one rabbit hole yeah. and specialize in that and not look at the other parts. Maybe. Or... It's about like, okay, when I start questioning that, oh my God, what else do I have to question? And I don't want to go there because I yeah. can't deal with the emotions that are coming up when I real realize how effed up our society is. Yeah. Which, yeah, is a hard thing to take, a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. And also when you see and when you've got the truth, then you know that you can do something about it yeah. and you can take back your power and start caring for your body yourself 
when you understand how your body works because you've got a relationship with it that's the most powerful thing you can do for yourself yeah. for your planet sure. for everyone yeah absolutely yeah. yeah and i remember this one thing that like our organs can't hurt so when you've got a liver pro problem like for, for muscles the muscle will hurt mm. for bones the bones will hurt the liver can't hurt yeah super mom is suffering quietly yeah in silence. she's trying in different ways but we have to know how to spot the symptoms we have to speak her language mm -hmm. yeah is there anything else that comes to your mind when it comes to liver and liver health and the vast magnitude of roles she's playing like just going back to my first point about having that connection because to me I know I've talked about this before the abdomen is hugely neglected when it comes to touch and mm. you know when you go for a full body massage I've never had one where they're massaging around my stomach it's mm. always just been like the limbs and the back and, and the head and <clears throat> I think a lot of what you've just talked about like having that agency over your body having that awareness one of the most powerful things you can do is get familiar with your own body and like deepen your relationship you don't have to understand fully how everything works you just have to have that curiosity and that love and appreciation for everything that your body is doing for you and with my community one of the things that I've invited them to do this month is to give themselves a hug every day and to thank their body for their service like just mm -hmm. connect with themselves and for me like I said like putting your hand on your liver and just acknowledging that. you don't have to understand all the processes and and you know everything that's going on just have that awareness that she's doing a lot for you mm. and giving her that recognition and creating that bond between you is going to be so powerful like I know like I'm talking from experience here I'm someone that was so living out of my body like just resenting every piece of myself because I was in so much pain and so broken but having that invitation to just hold myself hold certain parts of myself and just send love and awareness there has mm. been so deeply changing so it doesn't have to be you know big life altering changes yes, in yeah. your habits exactly and if you're someone like me who because I was so outside of my body I found meditation impossible I just couldn't do it and it frustrated me even more because everywhere I went people were telling me that meditation was the cure to everything you know yeah of course <laughs> but if you're not if you're not capable of that just have 10 to 30 seconds connecting with your liver and just taking some deep breaths and letting her know that you know she's there and that you appreciate her. Like that is one of the first steps you can take towards really changing your relationship with your body, your health and your well-being. And I dare say that is meditation. But that's, a podcast. that's a different podcast. I completely <laughs> agree. Completely agree. But I'm talking about like the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Image. Like many people promote yeah. this. You sit still and you have yeah. no thoughts. And that's yeah. meditation and nothing else. There is yeah. no right or wrong. We need to do a podcast episode on this because I completely agree. But yeah. But. Okay, let's note that down. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say when you said this part about like, when you go to a massage, they will not massage your body. I have been on the other end where I learned or I wanted to become a massage therapist and I okay. did a training and we were not supposed to go into people's abdomens 
because that's such a private personal part of the body uh -huh. that we should not touch it, especially not without like having consent beforehand. That's why we didn't learn how to do, for example, visceral manipulation really or like, um, massage. And there is like in realizing this just now, there is this, the split where I don't know what comes first, you know, is it you go to a, a massage therapist and they don't massage your abdomen and then you think, oh, maybe that's an untouchable area. Yeah. Yeah. And so we perpetuate something, whereas the massage therapist thinks, oh my God, I can't go there because it's too private. <laughs> like I don't yeah. want to invade their personal space. And so we've got two people who are not talking to each other yes. with completely different intentions. And one of them makes it, Oh, my body is an area that I shouldn't be touching or yeah. connecting to. Yeah, and it's, so it's really fascinating how yeah. we start creating these stories when we don't pay attention to communication. Yeah, absolutely. And the easiest thing that I like to say is there is such an easy way for to get to know your abdomen and start reconnecting because also in many female health related problems, because of scar tissue, because of all the pain that is associated with it, that area, many women and menstruating folks don't want to touch that area. Possibly also because massage therapists seem to <laughs> perpetuate yeah. this idea that it's an yeah. untouchable area. Who knows? Um, and where I start is like, like you would do with a baby when they've got some stomach upset. You start at the right hip then you move your hand up to the yeah. right lower rib cage. You move all the way over to the left lower rib cage, down to the left hip and back to the right hip. And having the circular movement around your belly button that will also stimulate your digestive system, which yeah. is also here to help you eliminate eliminate toxins on all levels. And that too will help your liver. Yeah. So if you want to have a second step after the connection to your liver itself, how about you get acquainted with your abdomen? I love that. Yeah. And the all the <clears throat> other organs, the big long gut that lives just below the liver. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And of course. If you've got any questions or if you want us to record something about any area that interests you further apart from meditation, because we've got on that on the list yes. now, <laughs> please reach out, leave a comment, let us know what your biggest aha was. Share this episode with a friend if you found something that was really insightful for you or if you just want to help us get the word out how important the liver is in your overall health, then please share this episode with people. Uh, we would be very grateful. Absolutely. And of yeah. course, if you suspect that there is some deeper work necessary for your health, then by all means, get in touch with Amy or with me because we have gone through a training in this. We mm -hmm. have tried it on ourselves. We have seen the results on our in our own bodies. We know what we're talking about. So um, yeah, get in touch with us, you know, one of us. Absolutely. And I think my closing message is quite simply to love your liver and mm -hmm just give her you know love yourself love your liver and appreciate how amazing and love your love your super mom yeah completely and yeah I really hope this episode has made you realize how amazing not only your liver is but how amazing you are and mm -hmm. as Lisa has just said if you have any questions or you want any extra support you can reach out and we will be here and happy and willing to help so, and if you like... are a mom yourself yeah. or you have children, then give yourself some recognition. Absolutely. Because there can be as much appreciation from outside if you don't give it to yourself. Completely. It will not count. 
absolutely so agree. appreciate yourself for everything you do and even if you're not a mom if you're yeah. simply a human being on this planet in this day and age where everything seems to get out of hand appreciate yourself for being alive and breathing every day yeah it's you have permission to appreciate yourself it's okay to big yourself up and acknowledge how amazing you are mm. yeah have so an amazing day. yeah we will finish with sending you lots of love wishing you an amazing day and we will catch you in our next episode bye bye